wonder how would my grandfather feel if he saw what I did to his business today. My grandfather might be angry because he is very strict when he was running Ching Yu Heng in the beginning. When my grandfather started, we actually started with making your Chinese candies, your sanza, your hoton. In the 40s, 50s, we started making rock sugar, red sugar, and black jaggery sugar, which we still do till today. When I came into the business, it was really about trying to look at processes, uh, trying to modernize the business, and eventually led to uh, creating our own brand of Jewel's Rock Sugar Sticks, which was a reinvention of our traditional rock sugar. For Cheng Yu Hing, we kind of like were like a one one hit wonder kind of product. The market at that time, uh, a lot of the younger generation didn't know how to use your sugar. If I were to rate the difficulty uh, in transforming the business, I guess it would be 10 out of 10 or 11 out of 10. The process was difficult, trying to change a very traditional business uh, at the start when I first uh, joined the business almost 12 years ago. For me, when I took over the business, my, my family was telling me, why change it when it's not broken? It's that kind of fear that you think about, you know, whether what you do has any success or, or failure. And then telling them to do something that they were not accustomed to took a lot of energy, a lot of time, but you know, you do it step by step and then uh, gain that trust and that kind of respect and then you can do a lot more as well. In 2014, we went for our first exhibition almost in the whole history of our company. Uh, we took part in Food Hotel Asia and we, we just wanted to, you know, just showcase uh, our products uh, and, and look for international businesses, uh, new markets. And when we exhibited, many of our old customers were like, so why are you here? You know, uh, you have like no new products. Uh, we know all your products. So that kind of got me started and thinking, there's something that we really need to do. I first uh, learned about design thinking when I went to San Francisco. Uh, on a business uh, learning trip. We actually um, uh, had workshops uh, on design thinking, learning about different personas, uh, how customer-centric uh, design thinking was. And in fact, some of the takeaways that I learned during this trip was how to spot trends, look at design as a focus. Design thinking was something that actually set you apart from the rest of the competitors as well. It's not just the end result, it's also the process. To reach out to the younger audiences, first we need to understand how they think, what they want. So obviously they wanted something more, you know, social media friendly, you know, Instagrammable, something more experiential that they would be able to connect with the brand. When I was creating the packaging with our designer, there were a lot of reiterations. There were a lot of back and forth as well. I remember occasions where I was working with the flavor houses, tasting different rock sugar sticks in different intensities, in different flavors. And so we, we came up with the Jewel Shock Sugar Sticks, which had color, flavor, packaging, but also the way you have it, uh, like a candy or dipping candy, was what set us apart from what was out there in the market. In our traditional rock sugar, the top uh, layer of the rock sugar, very pretty, very, you know, shiny, so a lot of our customers uh, would call it zoo or pearls. So naturally, when we had to think of a name to name our rock sugar sticks, then we thought, what do we have existingly that you know connects with our consumers or our, our market? And then you know, since we already had pearls, maybe we can call it jewels, and that would also be able to target the younger generation, the ones that we wanted them to you know, feel that all oh, our rock sugar sticks are as precious as them. So with Jewels, uh, actually it helped us open a lot of new uh, possibilities. And some of that was opportunities being sold in China, 
then in Hong Kong, and then in Malaysia, and then of, of course in Singapore. It gave us new markets, but at the same time, gave us opportunities to work with different brands. So we, when we first started, we had the opportunity to work with the 1872 Clipper Tea Company. Together, we created a tea set that had tea as well as uh, rock sugar sticks uh, that you could pair differently. Uh, you can gift or you could you know, just enjoy it and consume it on your own. So it not only opened new um, overseas markets, it also opened new consumers to our business. And that's what we really wanted. So in 2018, we went into the business of food incubation with Innovate360. From zero startups, now we have about 28 startups in different verticals from food sustainability, agri-tech, deep tech, as well as consumer packaged products. These are the startups that we, we foresee can disrupt the future. We wanted to tap on the startups to create products that could sell through our channels. So this is like an entire contrasting part from what I first started in the business, looking at uh, you know your ISO processors. So a lot of all these has actually resulted from the fact that you know how we approach our business, how we look at it differently. Design thinking has helped us develop new business lines. Uh, but also create opportunities for us to collaborate with people and to influence them in creating design-centric products or even processes. If my grandfather was, was still alive, uh, he would definitely be scolding me and saying, wow, what are you doing? Uh, uh, you see me see jewels. Uh, what have you done to the business? Because he was a very strict person, so I think he would be mad. <laughs> But I, I think he would also be proud in the sense that we've come full circle so from his time of creating your Chinese candies uh, to going back to making jewels and then uh, at the same time leveraging from you know create all these sugar and candies to creating a lot of impact to the world right now. Uh, I think that that's something that he would be proud of. At the same time, uh, leaving a legacy that the next generation will be able to take over.